Okay. Um, hi. Um, so um, I'm going to probably keep this short here. I'm basically going to wait and see if I have anybody show up, ask, ask some questions about our assignment five this week or the materials for this week. Um, but otherwise, I'm just going to post this. I'm going to refer you maybe to the video before this. So um, I did get started on the assignment five um, on our previous help session video. So um, I did show some examples of, um, I can bring that up real quickly, but you know, um, um, our, our assignment is kind of the same structure as, as hopefully most all of you are used to by now. So um, you can certainly get started by um, um, creating like your stub functions. So I showed, you know, um, setting up your, uh, the, uh, the, the first function sequential search recursive and, and the uh, prototype for it. And, um, and then just returning a stub so that you could get it to compile and run um, and get your first few tests working for it. So um, I was expecting there might be some people would, would ask some questions about the, the binary search. So um, algorithm, although maybe not. I mean, I, if you watched the video materials this week and understood the sequential implementation of it in a loop, um, converting that to a recursive version should not be too difficult. So, so hopefully everybody won't have a problem with that. And likewise, doing a, a recursive version of a sequential search um, is pretty similar to the tail recursion for the factorial that you did last week. So, so, so I, I'm, I'm hoping that, um, you know, people will, won't have too much of a trouble with this assignment. Um, oh, and, and by the way, I think the, the function signatures for the sequential search and the binary search recursive are basically going to be the same. So in both cases, you're given a list. Um, and instead of the size of the list, you're given the beginning in index. And that's kind of to support the recursion because for both of these, when we call ourselves recursively, we're only going to call ourselves on a smaller portion of the list to, to search um, the unsearched part. So, and then finally, a search value. And I think in this assignment, in both cases, we're using a string. So, um, People that are familiar with using C, and, and you know, I'd be happy to talk about this. Maybe I should talk a little bit about this. I'm, I'm sure I do talk about doing string processing in C++ in some of my, my uh, lecture videos for the course, right? So, I mean, you can do represent strings using arrays of characters. And if you're doing C instead of C++, you have to because you don't. The, the string type is really a C++ thing. It's a it's a new class really that was added to the language, but it acts like a fundamental built-in type in, in most ways, right? So I mean, if you need to represent strings, you really should be using using a string object, so the, a data type of string. Um, but um, those that are familiar with using arrays of characters now you have to do you have to use the the old c string library which expects to have an array of characters and then you have to call functions on your strings to do things like um uh, search the string and compare if two strings are equal or not so 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 um as some of the tests here probably would show i mean it's it's a lot simpler to use strings oh it's it's um um, it's a lot simpler to use strings. So, for example, for comparison, um, uh, just as an example, like uh, so, I've, I've maybe given away most of the base case now here, is, except uh, you shouldn't have a hard coded zero here. But um, but basically, you know. The, the array called list is an array of strings and the search value of strings. So if I take a particular one of those strings, you can use comparison operators. Uh, so you really can't do this with old style character arrays, but you can directly use comparison operators to compare two strings and it will do what you expect. So if the two strings are equal, this will be true, right? You can also do like greater than and less than if you wanted to, um, if you want to do some alphabetical ordering, that kind of thing. So. Um, but, but anyway, you know, strings to get back to that, they are much higher level and much easier to use to represent and process um, uh, textual data in C++. So you always want to use the string type so for that. All right. Um, 
Yeah, and like I said, um, uh, one other thing I did talk about last time, uh, again, you know, if you're looking for this information, you should go back to the previous video for this because I'm not going to go ahead into it um, in detail here again. But, you know, uh, again, I'll remind you that you are required to have these function documentation. Okay, so every file should have this file called file header. It's, it's really just a comment, it's just a big C comment, but these two stars and these at tags, like at file, at brief, these are special markup for um, documentation generation systems. So we, I've, I've got it set up so you can get a flavor of, of how you use um, one such system called um, doc oxygen, okay, for generating these. So, so um, the, this tool can automatically search for things like with two stars here to figure out that this is a specially formatted comment block with information for generating documentation from it, like to pull out these tags, right? Likewise, every one of your functions that you write in this class, whether it's a regular function or a member function of a, of a class, of a C++ class, um, has to also have function documentation, right? And I want you to get into the habit of this, right? You really, like, like I mentioned last time, you really should get into the habit of writing this before you write your function because this helps your thinking in implementing your function correctly. So if you know kind of what your function is supposed to do, that's what the description is. So, so the first line is just a two or three word short description or, or short tag for the function. Um, you know, it should be one, two, three, four words here. And then after that, you have one or more sentences, which is a longer description. Then you have a block of at pram tag. So every parameter you have, we've got four here, should have exactly one at pram tag. Um, and then if you're a value returning function, you should also have a return tag um, to document the return value, right? But it's useful to, um, um, To, to think about that before you actually start writing your function, it, it, it helps you get clear in your mind what you need to do, right? And, and again, quickly, as I showed, um, I sign before, once you do that, um, you can run the, um, the, the docs, um, target here of our build system to generate the, the system documentation, right? So if you do a make docs, you want to make certain that you don't see any warnings when you do this. So uh, this, this will tell you that you might have some missing documentation or something. So um, I did have one warning here. So, so my my big int, um, oh, this is assignment four, um, one assignment five here. So that's a warning from the previous assignment. So you probably shouldn't see, uh, assuming that you didn't, aren't missing something, you probably shouldn't see any warnings. Like, like for example, you will get a warn warning, you're, you're supposed to document all parameters, you know, so if, if you don't, um, it will tell you that um, when you make your docs that, uh, that you know, our parameters are missing or, or all the documentation for function missing. Um, right. All right. Um, yes. Yeah, so like I said, um, I'm going to hang out and see if we have some people kind of join for office hours and ask questions on assignment five. So if anybody does join and ask questions, um, um, uh, I'll turn the recording back on if it looks like it might be a general kind of thing that would be useful. But otherwise, um, you know, feel free to email me if you have questions about things this week. Um, if you want more details about the assignment five, getting started on it, or you know, doing your your function documentations, uh, go back to the previous video. So I have more details on that. Okay, um, if um, I don't come back for any more questions, that's it here and um, you know, keep warm and, um, and uh, try and get your, your quiz submitted today and, and your assignment five submitted on time, so all right.